So we'll start up Genius 3. I'm going to create a project called Packet Remote 1 and click OK. Under Help, I'm going to go to Setup Wizard and select this option, Run Everything on a Remote Server and click Next. So in the documentation, that's what we're told to do. And we need to put in the server settings. Now we're told that the IP address of the server needs to be 172.16.253.1. So I'm going to copy that and put that into GNS3. I'm going to uncheck Enable Authentication and click Next. Now the local server is stopped. And in this example, I'm getting an error saying that the client version differs from the server version. So what I'll need to do is upgrade my GNS3 GUI. But at this point, I'm going to click Finish. So even though the versions of GNS3 are different, this proves that I have communication to the remote server. So what I'm going to do at this point is upgrade my GNS3 GUI. So what I'm going to do now is download the latest version at the time of this recording of the GUI. And I'm going to save that to my local hard drive. And then I'm going to run the installation process. I'm going to skip ahead through this installation very quickly because this video assumes that you're familiar with GNS3. Have a look at my other videos if you're not sure how to install the GUI. So the GUI is now installed. And I'm going to start up GNS3 again. So I'm no longer getting the error. And notice I'm connected to the main server. There is no local GNS3 installation. So I'm going to call this packet remote 1 and click OK. Now, if you need to add a devices, go to Edit Preferences as an example. I'm going to add a new Cisco iOS image to the packet server. So the image notice is uploaded to the server. This is not going to run locally. This is going to run on the remote server. The previous 3725 image shown here was previously running locally. But I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use the remote server. So I'm going to click Next. I'm going to call the C3725 remote and click Next. This router requires 256 mega RAM. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to add some modules to the router. Click Next. Add some WIC cards. This depends on your router platform. Click Next. Idle PC value is found, so I'm going to click Finish. So the remote router is now available. I'm going to click OK. So under Routers, if I try and run the local router, notice there's an error because everything is running on the remote server. So I'm going to drag the C3725 remote router to the workspace. And that's now accepted because I'm running these devices on the packet.net server. So I'll connect the two routers together. You can obviously make large complex topologies here if you want to. I'm not going to bother with that. What I want to show you is notice everything is running on the remote server. And I can start up these devices. And I can open up a console to the devices. But they are not running on the local PC. These devices are running on the remote packet server. So I'll change the console so we can see that better. There's router 2, which is the first router in this topology. Here's router three, second router in the topology. So on the first router, I'll no shut the fast Ethernet interface and give it an IP address of 10.1.1.1 as an example and create a loopback interface of 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. 
and I'll enable EIGRP 100 and enable EIGRP on all interfaces. So show IP interface brief. That's the IP address on the fast ethernet interface. That's the IP address on the loopback. On router three, do something similar. No shut the fast ethernet interface and give the router an IP address. So it should be able to ping router one at this point, which it can. Create a loopback of let's say 2222. I'll enable EIGRP on all interfaces. Neighbor relationship has formed, so show IP route shows us that router three has learnt the IP address of the loopback of router two, and router three can ping the loopback of router two. And by the same token, router two can ping the loopback of router three. Now you may wanna change the names of the routers, so you have router one and router two as an example, rather than router two and router three but you can continue using all the basic functionality of GNS3 here. The big change here is that everything is running on the packet.net server. So my GUI is running locally, but the GNS3 server is running on this remote server, which allows me to create large topologies without using local resources. Now again, this is the cloud, so you can scale. You can run really large topologies be aware, however, because it's the cloud, you will be paying for every hour of usage. Don't just shut the servers down. When you've finished, delete the server. So I'm asked, do you wanna delete the server? I'm gonna say, okay. So I'm gonna remove that server from my account, so I'm no longer charged for the server. In the GUI now, things are broken because the server is no longer available. So the routers are down. And as an example, if I try and add another router to the topology, we get a compute operation timeout because the server is no longer available. The GNS3 documentation does show you how to back up your packet server so that you don't need to run it continually. So you can back up your configuration and then import it into a new server when you're ready to use the resources of the cloud. Now again, GNS3 version 2.0 has brought a lot of enhancements to the GNS3 platform, including the ability to run the server component in the cloud. No longer do you need to run the GNS3 VM locally on your PC or on an ESXi server, but you can now leverage the resources of the cloud and run your GNS3 VM on the packet infrastructure. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.